this is Dee Marie. Mm. Let me tell y'all what happened today. Today, you know, I was thinking I had missed this weekend. I didn't shoot a video. I got a lot of good feedback about my videos this weekend. So I was like, there are people watching and listening. That's what's up. That's cool. I'm going to have to keep doing it, right? But I didn't really have time this weekend. I was a little busy. I had a barber battle. What's up, Johnny Akins? Battle of the Champions in Chicago was off the chain. It was great, a lot of great talent out there. Anyway, I was, I was, uh, I was doing stuff this weekend. Didn't get a chance to shoot something. But my girl, Thursday for real, mm, 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 posted a question in the Barber Society. It's a Facebook group. If you're not on it and you're a barber and you want to get some knowledge and you want to talk about some things, just kick it around with some other barbers, find out what's going on. It's a great forum to do that. A lot of good conversation. All the big names and great minds are on there. So check it out. Follow them. Uh, get in the group. Um, post haircuts. You can sell stuff on there if you want. Anyway, great group to be a part of. Christopher Burke. Amazing job, man, as always. So anyway, going back. Thursday posted this question, right? And it went something like this. She said, so you got a choice. Okay, you got employee A, easy to get along with, you know, always on time, right? But their cuts are about a seven, right? Okay, then you got employee B, uh, needs to always be managed, always late, uh, always ruffling feathers, right? Always going against the grain, starting problems in the shop. He's got a ton of clients, but He's got a ton of clients and he cuts at about a nine, right? Okay, so employee A, easy to get along with, only cuts at about a seven, um, uh, but always on time, reliable. <clears throat> then you got employee B, right? Cuts at a nine, has a ton of clients. He's always late. He needs to be managed all the time, right? And um, what was the other thing? Oh, he's hard to get along with, right? Always goes against the grain and ruffles the feathers. So she asked in the group, if you had to choose whether you were going to work with employee A or B or as shop managers or shop owners, if you had to choose if you were going to hire employee A or employee B, which one would you choose? Little Jeopardy music. Spoiler alert, everybody pretty much chose employee A, right? Easy to get along with. He's going to be on time. Reliable dude. Haircuts may be at a seven, right? But we can work with that. We can grow that. You can train anybody to cut hair. Is what the majority of the people said. Now, of course, a couple people went against the grain. That put their two cents in. But pretty much everybody agreed. Employee A is the guy you're going to want to be with. Coworker A is the guy you're going to want to be with. But I want to break this down a little bit further. I want to explain to you guys why shop owners think this way. Why we would rather work with employee A. Because then my follow-up question was, if everybody agrees that we want to work with or we want to employ employee A, why are there so many employee Bs in the industry? Actually, in my experience, there's a ton more employee Bs than employee A's, even though everybody's willing to admit we want to work with employee A. So why is that? Sorry, I got a little, it's springtime and, you know, Chicago going crazy, so I got a little. Anyway, listen up. What we're really talking about here is work ethic. At the end of the day, if you boil all this stuff down, right, reliability, punctuality, um, maybe haircuts aren't great, right, but easy to get along with, so we're thinking teamwork here, right, versus all the anti of that. So late, hard to get along with, uh, really what we're talking about is work ethic here. Everybody wants to work with somebody with good work ethic. Nobody wants to work with people with poor work ethic, right? Work ethic is, is the ethic that you approach your work with, right? Like, like how do you want to be seen at your job? How, how do you want to perform your work? Do you have integrity about your work? Do you have like, you know what I mean? Like, do you have integrity? Do you want to put good stuff out in the world? Are you just kind of like not caring you're going to make this money or you just plowing through things? So, you know, I'll cut hair when I get there. They're going to wait on me. 
Is it about you or is it about the client? All of these questions come back to work ethic. And unanimously, we agree we rather work with somebody with good work ethic, right? Um, the problem is, though, that in this industry, a lot of people get into barbering or hair because they, they want to work for themselves, right? Everybody wants to work for themselves. But we really need to examine what that actually really means. So last time I did a video, we talked about the book, um, Before You Qu Quit Your Job by Robert Kiyosaki. And we'll kind of reference that a little bit again today, right? So people with poor work ethic have a tendency to believe that working for yourself means they can come and go when they want to. They can dress how they want to. They can say what they want to. If they feel like leaving for two hours to go to lunch, they can do that. Who's going to manage them? Who's a boss? They don't have no boss. I work for myself. I'm self-employed, right? Maybe you go smoke weed and have a drink on your lunch hour, right? And you come back and, you know, you get the smell on you. If you come back, hell, maybe sometimes you just take off. Just don't come back. Don't tell nobody you're not coming back either. Do you sweep up your station? Do you sanitize stuff? Like, are you like one of those people? Man, I got to sweep that up. I pay you to work here. Right? The shop owner worked for me. That's what one of the guys in the post said today. Kill me. Oh, the shop owner worked for you. That's amazing. It's a joke, man. It's a joke because it's simply not true. Let me tell you who the shop owner works for. The shop owner works for himself. You are paying for the privilege of working in the shop that he created. So you're not paying booth rent so that your boss works for you. You're paying for your booth rent because you haven't gotten off your ass and opened your own shop yet. And as such, you owe him a tax for working at his shop. Now, he doesn't owe you anything besides keeping the doors open and the lights on and whatever else he may agree to. I mean, he doesn't work for you. He doesn't owe you anything. If you want to open your own shop and be fully accountable to yourself, then you should open your own shop. But let me tell you the thing that people with good work ethic and smart business sense already know. We're in a customer service industry. You have customers. You have clients. You'll never work for yourself. You are constantly going to work to make your clients happy, to build your brand, to take care of your team. But you do not work for yourself. You work to promote your brand and keep things moving. But you have people you got to be accountable to. You got to be accountable to your vendors. You got to be accountable to your clients. You got to be accountable to your team. And this is the mindset that people like employee A already understand. Right? They are saying that they need to be on time. Not only on time, they should be a little bit early. Because if my, I walk in at the same time as my client, I'm late. People with good worth of ethic already understand this. Employee A already understands this. You can't take a break whenever you want because your clients are not going to wait indefinitely for you. And if you believe that you can go and come whenever you feel like a break as long as you want, and you believe that your clients are gonna wait for you, in the meanwhile, someone else is gonna take your clients while they're sitting there waiting for you. The guy, employee A, who's there on time and actually has an opening in his appointments because he runs on time, right? And even though he may only cut it at seven, guess who has availability for your clients because you're out smoking weed, drinking, or taking three hour long lunches? Employee A. See how that works? Good work ethic will beat out talent all day, every day. All day, every day. And this is what we need to understand. Employee A understands that keeping clients happy is his main priority. Employee B believes that keeping himself happy is his main priority. But think about this, employee B. You can be happy as you want, but when your clients get done waiting for you, and appeasing you and moving the way that you want them to move and they go over to employee A, how happy are you gonna be when you broke? Employee A gonna be real happy with all your clients, but where are you gonna work? What are you gonna do? People will not wait for you forever. 
People won't put up with your poor work ethic, your lack of sanitation, or your three hour long lunches. They won't do it forever. It may be cute to hang out away for you because you're the best barber in the shop for a little while, but sooner or later their priorities will become more of a priority than waiting on you to get a haircut and Barbara ain't looking real tempting because he's sitting over there being real clean, professional, on time, and waiting for you to get back from break. And that client is going to say, you know what, I ain't waiting on this dude. You good? Let's go. I'm next. Let's get it. Every time. And this is what people with good work ethic understand. They're saying that the client is the top priority. And not only is the client the guy sitting in a chair waiting for a haircut, sometimes the client is the owner. Sometimes if the client, sometimes the owner has something to do and that employee A is going to say, boss, go ahead, cut out, or owner, or Bob, or Paul, whatever the hell you call the shop owner, is going to say, you know what, I got you, don't worry about it, I'll lock up, go handle that thing real quick. Because he's reliable and he has good work ethic and we're going to trust him to do what he said he's going to do. Because guess what, he has good work ethic. He's going to do what he said he's going to do. If I got to cut out an emergency, I know employee A is going to lock up for me. I know he's going to take care of business the way I would take care of business. And when I get back, everything's going to be square. I'm not leaving my shop with employee B. No. Because I don't trust you. Because you don't even show up for your own clients. Why would you show up for me? Sometimes the client is not the shop owner. Sometimes the client's not the guy waiting for a haircut. Sometimes the client is your coworker. Sometimes your coworker is so busy. So just jam-packed, he can't even stop to go, go get lunch. If I'm employee B and I got a break in my day, yeah, I'll go get you. So yeah, what you need to do, let me know. Let me get some of that cash right quick. I'll go pick it up for you, no problem. Some employee A understands because he has good work ethic that, that the world does not revolve around him. And the way to be most valuable is to make yourself valuable to the people around you. But if you are so involved in your own value that the world revolves around you, guess what? People around you are going to fall off because they don't want to be bothered with you. Employee A creates value for those around him, and so more people are going to want to be around him. That's just inherently how things work. But when you believe that the world revolves around you, or you should have your way, and you should be able to do this, and you should be able to do that, people will fall away from you. And sooner or later, you're going to be an island. And barbers have a hard time making money as islands because we need people clients make sense come on man this all comes down to work ethic at the end of the day we want to work with and next to someone with good work ethic because they want to make our lives easier right and we got to get away from this i work for myself so i don't have to do this and i don't have to do that like yeah you do if you want to do anything besides work behind a chair you do. You need to create value in the people around you, including your employees, including your customers, including your coworkers. Like, it just is the way it is. We may cut hair, but what we also do is create value in the lives and the people around us. If you're a barber who is only cutting hair and you're not talking to your clients, you're not growing with them, you're not growing your shop, you're not growing your team, if you're just showing up, making money, and going home, You'll never do anything other than cut hair. I don't care how many shops you own. I don't care. You'll never be able to get from behind a chair because you are an island. And we can't make money like that. The way to make money is to spread your value so, again, so across so many platforms and people that you can actually step away and have your money continue to make money for you. That's how money grows and wealth is created. You can stand behind a chair and cut hair all you want and alienate everybody around you and you'll never be wealthy. You'll be poor and burnt out and your body will give up on you. The way to grow away from your business and be able to stand back and then put your hands on another business and then grow that one and stand back and watch it run and then grow another business and then stand back and watch it run is to create value in the people around you. That can't happen when you're all about you. That has to happen when you create value for the people around you. Does that make sense? And the only way to create value for the people around you is to be a giver. It's to be an employee A. It's to show up with good work ethic. 
Do what you need to do for your clients. Make them a top priority. Do what you need to do for the shop owner. Make him a top priority. Do what you need to do for your coworkers. Make them a top priority. That person, everybody wants to be around. That person, everybody wants to support. Your clients want to sit in your chair. I don't care if your haircut is a seven because you know what? I've said it before. I've said it again. Most clients don't know the difference between a level seven haircut and a level nine. Most of them don't. They know the difference between a three and a seven. That's a big jump. Between a seven and a nine? Not really. So your value as a nine, as an employee B, isn't even all that great to your, to your clients. But that employee, the A, that barber A, that's going to show up on time. He's going to have great work ethic. He's going to care about his work. He's going to provide value to everybody around him. They want to mess with that dude. And everybody around him wants to mess with that dude. And if you want to be anything other than a hair cutter the rest of your life, you're going to have to be that dude. Does that make sense? That's my time, man. I hope I meant something to y'all. I hope you learned something, gleaned something. If you have any questions, comments, criticisms, y'all know where to find me. Where is it? Oh, D. Marie Hair on all platforms. YouTube, uh, you can reach me at dmariehair at gmail.com. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, D. Marie Hair. D. E. Marie Hair. Cool? Sound good? I'll see y'all in a little bit. Take care of each other, man.